have your Bible, turn with me to Mark. I'm going to read out of other scriptures, but I want you to be in Mark chapter 8. I'll tell you the verse here in a minute. And uh, we're going to go through something. I think this will be good for us. It's something that the Lord has laid on my heart. And I believe it's something that's so important in our lives as Christians. Uh, And if we don't figure this out in our life, uh, we're going to live aimless and pointless lives aimless and pointless lives, and I don't know if you want to be a loser. I never wanted to be a loser growing up, even in high school, even when I wasn't saved. I still never wanted to be a loser, and sometimes that meant that I had to fake it to make it, and sometimes that meant that on commando day, I I said that I was commando at school, and some of y'all don't know what that means, even though I wasn't, even though I wasn't. I always wore my, I kept, I, I kept it good, but, uh, I remember I was, just, I was just trying to, you know, I was just trying to make it. But that's because I was living without a purpose. I was living without an anchor. I was living without a path or, a, you know, I knew who Jesus was. I gave my life to the Lord, but I lived and I lived without a purpose. And this is where uh, I want to pick it up. So if, if, if you've opened your Bible to Mark, say you're there. Mark chapter 8. You there? I see you waving your hand. Verse 34. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. This is what it says. Then he called to the crowd, then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, We'll save it. Oh, I'm sorry, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. Let me read that again. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with his holy angels. There's so much there, right? <laughs> There's so much. We're going to unpack this a little bit, and, uh, and uh, I believe, I do believe you will be blessed. Um, I was blessed. I've been, I've, been, I've been blessed again and again with this scripture, so I finally get to share it here. Victor, can you come on up? I need somebody. We need, we need a strong people in our church, and God has brought us strong people. I've already uh, figured out a ministry for you, by the way. You don't got to be here much longer before I can figure something else for you to do. And it ain't like security or nothing. I'm talking, we, we, there, there, there is a purpose on this man's life, and I believe that it's going to draw people to Christ. I really do. So uh, here's what the Bible says. I want you to stand behind me. So um, <laughs> the Bible says it like this. If anyone would come after me, he must desire, deny himself. To me, when the Bible says deny, when the Bible says that we must deny ourselves, to me, I believe it's something like a death that we, must, that we must die. Go ahead, go ahead and lay me down. Gently, though. Gently. Oh, God. <laughs> look, the Bible says, I believe that when we die, right? Look, you can't do anything. Dead people do nothing. We used to play this game called Mafia. Uh, and uh, there was always this saying, dead people don't talk. Dead people don't talk, but here's the beauty. So God says you must deny yourself, but we also know in the scripture, Paul says, he says, I I died, but I resurrected with Christ. I have died with Christ, but I've been resurrected. So now lift me up, man, and don't you lift me up. Yeah, no, not like that from behind. Squat me, man. No, no, not there. Here, here. You're strong. You can figure this out. Don't hurt your back. Oh, God. Oh, there it is. Yep. That's what we need strong people for. Listen. So then what happens? The Bible says, I have been crucified with Christ, but yet I live. And it's not I who live, but Christ that lives in me. Right? And so here we are. We have died to sin. We gave our lives to Jesus. Right? We gave our lives to Jesus, but now we're on this cross. 
Thank you so much. Can we give him a hand? Victor. <laughs> Nobody else. I've done this at a couple other places. Nobody else could lift me up. <laughs> Ain't fat. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but look, then we're on this cross, right? We died to sin, but then we're stuck on this cross. And, and I don't think anybody wants to be stuck on the cross. So what we do is the Bible says that it's not I that live anymore, but it's Christ that lives in me. So we come off this cross. If we were in Christ's deaths, then the Bible says that when we die with Christ, we also have life with Christ. So now we've died our death. And let me tell you something. If you're a Christian, you will never, ever die again. You will never, ever die again. And you might say, well, I see people die all the time. Baba Ula is still alive, right? Is she alive? Oh, it's your other grandma. Anyway, one of Leanna's grandparents are, have passed away. And Leanna's like, no, people die. I see my grandma passed away. Baba Ula is still alive. That's where the, she got her name, by the way. It, it was Ula, uh, Uliana. And uh, it's, a, it's a very rich name. Yulian is a very rich name. But they named her Leanna. I almost called you Lillian. Oh, Lord. This is going bad. Hey, listen, you're saying, but, but people die. But the Bible says... Listen, you will cross from life to life. So uh, now that I have been born again, I do not fear death. If you're a Christian and you fear death, it's probably because you're not a Christian or you've never read your Bible. Because once you have been born again, we await a greater glory in the age to come. And those of you who are storing up your treasures in heaven and those of you who have committed your life to the Lord, there's great things awaiting you in Christ. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says, that each will be given according to what he has done. So those are, I'm, thank God. I'm living for Jesus, and I believe in heaven. Ain't no doghouse waiting for this, brother. Have me, a, have me a nice place. I have a nice place in heaven. It says that, 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 that in, the, in my father's house, there's many, many rooms, and I believe I'm going to be in my father's house. We pass from life to life. So, but what happens is many times we as Christians, we come off this cross and we're like, yeah, I'm alive. Yes. And this is such a great thing, but we, this is what happens. We come off that cross and we're like running around, going wild, going crazy because even though we've been set free from our sin, we don't know what to do because we don't have any kind of an anchor. So we're like running around. We're like, oh, yeah, I'm Christian. Oh, yeah, I'm saved. This is good. Yep, I'm Christian. Oh, look at that. Oh, she fly. Oh, oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I love me some money. I want me another car. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, I want me. A, oh, I'm going to go succeed in life just so I can have some things. And even though we're saved, what starts happening is that we start becoming aimless. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason that... People get saved, and yet they, they live without a purpose. Remember I was saying, hey, God has brought us here with a purpose. If you're in this place today, that's because God wants you in this place today. That's because God has something to say to you today, right? God has a plan and a purpose on your life. You might not have a plan or a purpose for your life. You might think you're useless, but there's a big but. And anytime there's a big but, that means there's some around the corner, all right? You just might not be able to see it. But it's, it's because we've missed something. We've missed something when we got saved. And, and that is what the scripture says. He says, pick up your cross and follow me. You know, I was thinking about the cross and it's such a significant symbol in our faith. So, Here's my cross, I've come off my cross, right? But the Bible says, you must pick up your cross and follow me. Now, there's a purpose to carrying your cross. There's a purpose to carrying your cross. I want you to know that even Jesus himself could not finish carrying his cross in the flesh. Jesus did not finish carrying his physical cross. He, they, they got a man named Simon. Jesus couldn't make it. So they got a man named Simon, and it says that they put the cross on Simon, and Simon dragged that puppy. He did. That's what he did. And so 
It's not about, see, the Bible says that our war, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the, the authorities and the, uh, basically the things of the, of the spiritual world. Our, our fight is not a physical fight. Our fight is a spiritual fight. And so here's what we must do. Let me read this. He must deny himself. We already figured that out. What that means is to die to sin. Die to our selfishness. I believe in, uh, in the uh, NLT it says to die to selfish desires. To die to our own selfish desires, right? Something like that. To die to our own selfish ways. So what does that mean? And what it means is to live by faith. And here's what that, here, let, let, let me explain it to you. To die to my selfishness is to die to my own ambition of how I'm gonna succeed in life. You see, because living by faith, the Bible says live by faith and not by sight. Because when you live by sight, you'll never achieve what faith can do. Because God can do greater things through you than you will ever be able to do on yourself. On your own or by yourself. And so I want to get to another scripture real real quick. And and this is in uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 26. I'm going to read that real quick. I, you don't even have to turn there. But here's what it says. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I'm going to find this place. Oh, I don't know. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Watch this. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And when I read this today, and when when, when God was really formulating this in me, and I thought, God, how is that possible? You couldn't carry your own cross up the hill. God, you didn't carry the cross. You were so beat, you were so mangled, you were beyond recognition, dear Jesus, and and you did not have the physical strength to finish the task that you were sent on this world to do. So you needed help. And then it clicked. And And then I realized something, that his fight was not against the flesh and the blood. Right? His fight was, was against the turmoil of his soul. He knew that at any moment he could say, Father, enough! And he could have the angels there and they would tend to him. They would heal all his, everything, right? So watch this. A yoke, the reason they call it a yoke, the yoke is a teaching. But the yoke was something that they would put on an ox. Okay, so there, there would be a yoke of oxen. A yoke of oxen is two oxen. So it'd be like uh, two oxen, and there's one here and one here. And the thing that goes in the middle, right, and then there's a plow back here. If you guys can imagine that, right, there's a plow and there's some dude, probably really hairy. They didn't have, you know, they just use rocks or something to shave themselves, tore up face, or he probably had a beard. And so, and here he is, you know, and, 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 and there's the yoke and the oxen, they would have this put on them. And then the driver would direct the oxen and, and they would pull this yoke. And so I, I relate that to us as us, the Bible says, carry your cross, right? And if we're carrying our cross, then it too will make a path behind it, right? Because if you're, if you're carrying your cross, then you're going to make a path behind you, right? There's going to be something visible. If you were dragging a cross, there would be like a line or the way that I see it is it, it'd be like plowing a field. It'd be, it'd be doing something in the faith. It'd be doing something in the faith. And so the Bible says, Jesus says, pick up your cross, and follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. And then it goes on to say it like this. For who wa- whoever wants to, this is verse 35, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. See, there's this clause. There's this action behind it. First, we die to our sin. See, we're losing our life for Christ. But the second clause, our our salvation, it has actions behind it. If you are saved, it's not I have to do things in order to be saved. But what Jesus is saying is that if you are saved, these things will follow you, right? 
If you are saved, there is a plan, there is a purpose on your life. You have the cross on you for a purpose and it is for the sake of the gospel. The whole purpose of your life as a Christian is to spread the good news, is to spread the gospel. You might say, well, I don't know how I feel about that. Is that the truth? Because I see a lot of Christians doing a lot of other things. Or I see Christians doing, it is the truth. You do it in the arena that God has placed you in. At school, that's a perfect example. Juliana's at school. There's a demon running somebody around. She goes over there. God uses her, and she casts the demon out of somebody. You use the gift that God has given you in whatever arena you're in. God did not bless you for you. The Bible says it. That God blesses you so that you can be a blessing unto others. The giftings I have are a blessing for somebody else. The giftings you have are a blessing for me and everybody else. That is why the Bible says it like this. If, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else will be given to you as well. And you cannot live like that unless you truly believe in God. I I, I promise you, you will not live like that. You will cheat. You will lie. You will steal. You will pervert the truth. You will twist the scriptures. It was crazy. Man, I was online today. and (laughs) There's people putting up signs where come in here to do church and it's it's, it's into a bar and free drinks and free food. Free, no, it says free beer and free food. It's like, are you kidding me? How shallow, how low has Christianity fallen? Is it really about filling a room? It's so funny, somebody was talking to me about GTS, and I said, man, if, if this conference is about filling a room, then I don't want anything to do with it. The reason we try to fill the room is so that we can bless more people. I do not put in two months of my life and take days off of work in order to fill a room. I can fill a room if I want to fill a room. I show up with a kegger, and I just let anybody, any local high school know. And we, it's going to be a party. It's going to be full up in here. Right? I don't need to spend two months to do it, and we don't need to spend $5,000 to do it either. We can do it with a couple hundred bucks. I know how much keggers cost. That would be a good one too. <laughs> Some of y'all know. Anyway, so that's a bad thing to know. There there is a purpose. There is a purpose to your identity. And and God says that if you will live according to the plan and the purpose that I have for your life, miraculously, unexplainably, everything else in your life will fall into place. And you say, Alex, that's absurd. So what, I'm not supposed to go study? So what, I'm not supposed to go look for a job? So what, no, you are. You are, but your intention, your purpose is to, is to proclaim the gospel through whatever area that God has called you in. Let me tell you something. Not everybody is called to be a preacher on the stage. And if everybody was called to be a preacher on the stage, we would never reach anybody except for this room and the people in this room. And then even then, it'd be like eight of us here. And that's it. Why? Because we would never reach out. I love seeing when people reach out. I love hearing when people reach out. In my job, I have a lot of opportunity to reach out. I bet I have a chance to minister the gospel a lot, and I do. And I talk with people, and, I, and some people have given up on the faith, and we talk about the word of God. And they're my accounts, and we, I just wait for the right moment. And God gives me the right moment, and I just interject interject this other day this guy was cussing up a storm this and that and I go oh man he's like what are you doing this week and I'm like oh man yeah I'm a youth pastor we got this thing going on this and that and I'm just so excited and he's like oh really oh yeah yeah I go to church too all of a sudden he cleaned up his act turned a little bit red grown man 55 years old 
turn a little bit red. Because why? Because the gospel, it, it's going to change people's lives. It's going to change people's thinking. It's going to change if you are who you are. If you are who you claim to be, everything around you will become miraculous. It's amazing. Just, just yesterday, we were, we were with, uh, we, just with couples, basically. It's just couples. Uh, we do a Bible study together, and it's really cool. It's not pertaining to any church. It's just, I think there's like four random churches there. There's couples from four random churches. Some of my buddies doing, and I was like, man, this is awesome. And so we went there with my wife, and um, people have needs at the end of the thing. And so we pray for needs, and uh, one of them was this gal. She, she just got a job, and she worked there one day. But she really wanted this other job, and so she went and she interviewed there, and she's like, I'm not sure if I'm going to get it. I don't know. I don't know. Like, so many places have rejected her. She hasn't passed. And we're like, Lord Jesus. So we pray for her. And then the very next day, so today, she sends out the text. She's like, crazy praise report. They gave me the job. It's my option, whether I want to go or not. I'm like, that's our God. That's our God. You see, God takes care of his own. The Bible says that you won't be put to shame. You will not be put to shame if you are a child of God. Now, don't get that confused with uh, going through trials, right? Because we go through trials. The Bible says that the Lord disciplines those he loves. God knows I've gone through trials and good things happen to, I mean, bad things happen to good people. They do. Or what we would consider bad. But let me tell you something. Not every, not every struggle is a bad thing. The struggles, they help shape us, they help change us, they help, uh, they help change our thinking. God shapes us and forms us into who he wants us to be. I want to go back to the scripture. I want to go back to the scripture. And, and I want to read that again, just verse 35. So it says, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it right? Sounds counterintuitive. I'm going to give up everything that I think. I'm going to give up my way of carnal thinking and how to achieve things and how to cheat things and how to lie about things and how to steal things and how to manipulate people and how to lie to people and how to... I'm going to give that up because I trust that if I am honest and true, God's going to... God's laws are going to come into play, right? Remember that, that if you are a Christian, you're no longer under the laws of the devil and the laws of this world. You are under God's laws. And God's laws are way different than the way of this world, right? You, you're going you're gonna to produce crop in season and out of season. 12 months out of the year, you're going to be the fruitful tree. You're going to have a blessing on your life. What that blessing looks like, sometimes it's a hardship, but sometimes it's, 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 it's a great thing. Anyway, God will never... Leave you, nor will he forsake you, the Bible says. But whoever loses his life for, my, for me and for the gospel, right, to preach, to live with the purpose, God's plan, God's purpose with your life. And, and, and here's, the, here's, that, here's the point I was making about the oxen and about this, when you pull a cross, right, you could imagine that if I was walking on dirt and I was pulling a cross and, and the cross was big enough to hold me, then it would make a line behind me. Right? And then what do you do? Once the line is plowed, you would sow seed into the line. And I believe that's what God is telling us to do. He's saying, look, this cross, it's going to anchor you. This cross, it's going to show you your purpose. The cross of Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel, it isn't easy. If you walk with the cross amongst people, if I put this on my shoulder and I go everywhere with this thing, they're going to be like, dude, what is wrong with you? You are so weird. Everywhere. Like everywhere, like every, oh, oh, excuse me, guys. Let me just come through here with my, with my cool stand. Oh my gosh, I just can't wait to play music. <laughs> everywhere I go, I have my stand because that's who I am. I think you would get somebody's attention, right? They probably think you're a little bit strange. But that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that you are strangers here. You're aliens. You're, you're just passing through. And so, yeah, we are a little bit weird. But let me tell you something. Everywhere you pass through, the, 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 your life is going to impact somebody. And they're going to remember that person with the cross. 
They're going to remember that person who preached the gospel. Everywhere this guy went, he was a little bit awkward, but man, all, all, when, whenever he played his instrument, man, it was just, it changed. It was beautiful. It, it gave me peace. It gave me joy. I want to know a little bit more about the music this guy's playing. Right? Or, 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 or to say that I want to know a little bit more about Jesus because for some reason, when everybody else was freaking out, he was calm. She was calm. When everything else was going crazy, they, they somehow, they weren't afraid of dying. Somehow, he, he maintained his cool. What, why, are, why are you happy? Why? You know, why? why? What is it about you? Why do you have a peace? The, the economy's screwed up. The kids are messed up. The kids are on riddling. They say that I, when, when I was growing up, kids were looking at porn at 11 years old. Now they're looking at it eight and nine years old. It's sick. Why aren't you looking at porn? Why aren't you a pervert? Why aren't you sleeping around? Oh, why? Man, because I'm satisfied. I'm saving myself. I'm satisfied. I don't need it. I don't, that, I don't have a void inside of me that I'm trying to fill with, with paranophilia, with 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 uh, paraphilia or whatever it's called, uh, basically with 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 l the lusts and the desires of this flesh, I'm not trying to fill it with drinking. I'm not trying to drink all my troubles away. I'm not trying to smoke all my troubles away. I'm not trying to look at porn in order to get satisfied. Why? You're so weird. Don't you know that all nature speaks of this? Don't you know that we're just animals? No, we're not. I'm created in the image and likeness of God. God has made me a creator. God gave Adam the ability to name the animals. God didn't tell Adam, Adam, you name, you name the tiger, tiger. <laughs> oh, yeah, God was just fooling around with Adam. Yeah, Adam, here you go. Here you go, Adam. Name all the animals. And then God's like whispering in his ear, tiger, lion, bird, elf. Do they have elves? I don't know. <laughs> That little thing, that's an elf. No, no. God has a plan and a purpose on your life. The plan and the purpose for your life is to preach the gospel wherever you go, however you go. The journey that you will have, I don't know. I know the journey that I have, and it's, and it's cool. It's the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. It's the best experience I've ever had in my life. I have friends all over the world, literally, because of what I do. Because I never intended it to be that way. But God, right? That big but, but God. You know, God created the heavens and the earth. Can you imagine? You know, there's a but God. God has some plan in the purpose for your life. I want to finish up. I got five minutes. We're going to close. Proverbs 16.3 says, commit whatever you do unto the Lord, and, it, and he will make your plans succeed. Uh, you wouldn't be able to read what I wrote either, trust me. I, I don't even know if I read it. I think I just go by, by the scribbles, and somehow I could write my own language, I'm telling you. Anyway, the Bible says, commit whatever you do unto the Lord, and he will make your plans succeed. Commit your schooling to the Lord, and he will make your plans succeed. Commit, do you know what it means to commit what you do to the Lord? You say, God, this passion, I believe, is from you, and I give it to you, and that when you take me to this place, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. I'm not going to work to buy a nice house. I'm not going to work to, 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 to feed my, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to work for you, God, because I believe that everything else, you will supply my needs. If I need a house, you're going to give me a house. It, it comes with money. Trust me. You got, don't, don't get this twisted. And don't walk around the house claiming you're going to have it. It takes money to buy things, okay? We buy things, purchase, yes, but God's going to provide a way. Oh, you, oh, God, you want me to have kids? Oh, thank you, God that you're going to allow me to have children. Oh, thank you, God, that you gave me a wife. Oh, because I couldn't make up my life. Honestly, if you were to look back at my life when I was 20 years old, you're going to say, man, this guy going straight to hell because he's just the worst kind of Christian. Oh, yeah, he in the church. I, didn't, I never even missed a service. I was so good. I was so deceived. And I didn't even try to lie to people. Get this. I actually thought I was living right with God. The devil had me beat so bad. I would, I would, I would uh, go to church, 
But I would party the night before. And so every week, I would party the night before. The next day, I'd go to church every week. And I would read my Bible. The devil had me so beat, living a life of sin. But God says, you got to lay that down. Pick up your cross and follow me. The Bible says that, Jesus says that, never will I leave you nor will I forsake you. And, and here's the point of, uh, of the cross that Jesus didn't even carry up there. Listen, the Bible said, Jesus says that uh, my burden is easy. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. My burden is light. Remember that cross that Jesus didn't carry? You don't have to carry a physical cross. You're not, you're not getting to heaven by works. You're not, you're, you know, that'd be like turning the cross around. That'd be like turning the cross around and instead of pulling it this way, you're like pushing it this way into the ground. Could you imagine? You ain't going very far. You're like stuck. No, Jesus says, look, I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. The Bible says that it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. So who's carrying the cross? Christ. Christ has already done it. The cross has already made it. So the cross that you and I carry, listen, Jesus Christ is inside of me, so preaching is not a burden to me. It is a joy. It is Jesus that gives me the words to say. Singing and playing instruments should not be a burden. If you hate practicing your instrument, please get up out the worship team. There's somebody else that wants to do it. Don't waste your life doing something that you're not supposed to do. Do what you are called to do. And when you do it with all your heart, you don't have to carry a cross. Preaching is not a burden to me. I love to preach. Why? Because Jesus gives me the words to say. And this cross is easy for me to carry. Why? Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And that says, come to me all ye who are weary and burning, and I will give you rest. Let's stand up. <clears throat> Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It's not a fluke. Jesus wasn't lying. The promises of Christ are yes and amen. The purpose for your life is to preach the gospel. God's plan for your life is sure. God, the Bible says, and I remember somebody was preaching this, I believe, last week. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, unless it was. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And you will seek me when you find me, because it, uh, and, and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. There's this commitment that God calls on us to make he says look you you can have make it quieter you can have all of this you can have everything I have planned and purpose for your life but you gotta fully commit and I believe that a lot of us when we come to the Lord we say yes Jesus I want to I want to I want to be saved I don't want to go to hell I don't want them demons to torment me I want to have your freedom I want to have your blessing and we get up and then we resurrect with Christ we hop off that cross and we go running and we never take that cross with us. But to fully commit to God, to seek God with all your heart, is to do what he called you to do. It's to do what he called you to do. Let's pray. Let's pray, and I want us to consider ourselves, consider your own life. Say, Jesus, this is where I am. God, what do you want me to do with my life? You've laid plans. You, you've given me passions. Some of you want to be doctors. Some of you want to be teachers. Some of you want to be lawyers. Some of, you, some of you want to be politicians. I don't know what you want to do. Some of you want to be businessmen, businesswomen. God bless you. God bless you in your passions and in your desires. Be sure that you're doing it for God. Are you? doing it for God now. I'm not talking about 10 years down the road when you've achieved your dream. I'm talking about today, where you are, are you serving God? Or else, maybe you're not even in God. It's not the works that save you, but works follow those who are saved.